to another episode of Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Volvo 850R. When my son was a little fella, I was looking to buy a Volvo 850R wagon. In my mind, it could do it all. It would have been a sporty car to drive, and it would haul my baby boy and all his baby boy accessories. It turned out our growing family really needed two cars. So I ended up getting a Ford Escort wagon for Mom plus Baby, and a Lincoln Mark 7 for myself. Years later, when my baby girl was born, I started looking at 850R wagons again, but my fiancé really hated them. Her taste in cars sucks. No, it doesn't. Yes, yes it, it does. does. We ended up getting a 2007 Matrix TRD. It was insanely practical and reliable. More importantly to me, it also looked the part. My friend James has a super sweet V70R, so I can live out my Volvo dreams vicariously through him. The 850 was designed by Jan Wilsgaard. The sedan was introduced in 1991. The wagon body style was introduced in 1993. The 850 was touted as a dynamic car with four world-beating breakthroughs. The breakthroughs were a five-cylinder engine, front-wheel drive, Volvo's patented Delta Link rear semi-independent suspension. The party piece of the rear suspension was the bushings that compressed under load, effectively creating passive rear steering. The trick rear suspension was also responsible for the 850's impressive turning circle of 35 and a half feet. The fourth feather in the 850's cap was SIPS, Side Impact Protection. The fourth feather in the 850's cap was SIPS, Side Impact Protection System, along with ARH, Automatic Retractor Height Adjustment Seatbelts. The seatbelt runs directly onto a reel fitted into the pillar. A regular three-point seatbelt uses a runner to a reel, which is located on the floor. With this new system, the seatbelt was more comfortable to wear. The Volvo 850 debuted at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 1993 with this freaking crazy display. Going into this project, I really didn't understand the difference between a Volvo 850T5R and the Volvo 850R, so here goes. The Volvo 850T5R was supposed to be a limited production car, but it sold so well, Volvo followed it up with the 850R. I spent too long looking for T5R production numbers. I stumbled upon this cool chart that looks pretty authentic. The chart claims 6,964... Ugh, 64, what the hell is that? The chart claimed 6,964 cars total. The name T5R appeared to be a last-minute decision. The 1994 Volvo press kit called it a T5+. Plus. The origin of the R is not known. Some speculate the R is for racing, tying into the British Touring Car Championship. Others believe the R stands for R Sport, which was commonly used in Group A touring cars and rally sport. Porsche touches include 911 look leather suede seats and powertrain enhancements. Bosch also lent a hand with a new ECU program to add an extra 1.5 PSI of turbo boost. Exterior styling enhancements for the T5R included front bumper cover with integral front lip spoiler. Rounding out the back of the sedan was a standard rear deck spoiler. The wagon T5R's rear spoiler was optional, but most customers opted for it. Other style and aero bits included newly designed side skirts and polished aluminum door sills. Here is a list of 850T5R standard equipment. In the spring of 1996, a new high-performance Volvo called the 850R was introduced as a replacement for the T5R. The T5R was intended to be a limited production model, but the runaway sales success demanded a follow-up model. The 850R was similar to the T5R with a number of performance enhancements. The T5R's 2.3-liter 5-cylinder engine remained, but with a larger turbocharger, except for the automatic cars, new manifold, new intercooler, these enhancements increased the manual transmission cars by 10 horsepower, giving them a total of 247 horsepower. Torque also went up from 221 foot-pounds of torque to 258 foot-pounds of torque. The engine was renamed B5234T4. As usual, America got the shaft. Would you believe no manual transmission for them? We Canadians got a few, but they are as rare as hen's teeth. The automatic cars had 237 horsepower and 221 foot-pounds of torque. Suspension improvements were also made to the 850R. 
thinner sway bars were paired with stiffer dampener settings. The interior was also updated with suede insert seats with leather sides. The T5R had a very Porsche-like opposite. Styling-wise, the stands were given a newly designed rear spoiler, which was standard equipment on the wagon, rather than an option like it was on the T5R wagons. The 850R's equipment list was the same as the T5R, but with a few key differences. I couldn't find firm production numbers on the 850R's. 5,000 is a number that gets thrown around a lot on the interwebs, though. Volvo 850R marketing was fun, just like the car. The 850T5R commercial I found proclaimed them all to be sold, but suggested you could option up a regular T5 instead. Volvo's limited edition of the 850, the racing yellow T5R, was quickly sold out. For those who missed this rare opportunity, here's the good news. You can get your Volvo 850 the way you want it and with lots of extras. How about a turbocharged 225 horsepower engine, Titan aluminium wheels, a walnut dashboard, leather interior, double airbags, and much more. Anyway, you create your Volvo 850, you can be sure of one thing. It still is the most awarded new car in the world. Engines. The North American 1996 and 97 850R came with the B5234T4. It was a 2.3 liter 5. The bore was 3.2 inches and the stroke was 3.5 inches. The compression ratio was 8.5 to 1. It was turbocharged and intercooled with 247 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and had 260 foot-pounds of torque between 2,400 and 5,000 RPM. It was equipped with a Bosch Motronic 4.4 engine management system. The 850R came with the TDO4HL-16T turbocharger. The other engine used in our dynamic duel was the B5234T5. The B5234T5 has also been referred to as the B5234F2. Oh, Jesus Christ. The B5234T5 has also been referred to as the B5234FT5. It is a 2.3 liter straight 5. It is intercooled and turbocharged. The T5Rs had two different ratings for power. 222 horsepower at 5,600 RPM under normal conditions and 237 horsepower at 5,600 RPM with overboost. The 850T5R had 240 foot-pounds of torque between 3,000 and 4,800 RPM on manual transmission cars and 220 foot-pounds of torque between 2,000 and 5,600 RPM on cars with automatic transmissions. The R has a power output of 247 horsepower at 5,400 RPM and 258 foot-pounds of torque. Transmissions. The T5R had a 5-speed M56 manual transmission. The 850R had either an M56 or an M59 unit. The M59 had a limited slip differential. The automatic transmission used in both cars was an AEW42 4-speed automatic Asian Warner. Wheels and tires. The 850 T5R had TWR Volvo 850 race car inspired 17x7 Titan 5-spoke titanium gray alloy wheels wrapped in 20545ZR17 Pirelli P0 tires. The 850 had 17 by 7 inch Valan wheels wearing Pirelli P0 20545ZR17 tires. Brakes. Our dynamic duo wore 11 inch vented front rotors and 11.6 inch non-vented rear rotors. The front calipers were single piston units and the rears were dual piston. Acronyms. The 850s were short on acronyms. Only two. ABS. Anti-locking brakes, tracks, traction control systems, stock performance. Motor Week tested an automatic 850T5R, and it did 0 to 60 in 7.3 seconds, and the quarter mile in 15.5 at 92 miles per hour. My favorite bench racing site, 0 to 60 times, had the whole spread. Aftermarket performance. There's a fair amount of aftermarket support for the 850s. Performance calibrated stock ECUs and modified stock ECUs that can be custom programmed are available. There are several popular turbocharger upgrades, performance downpipes, cap-back exhaust systems, reverse flow intercooler piping, front mount intercooler upgrades, injector upgrades, stronger connecting rods, performance camshafts, and performance pistons. 
Just about anything you need to hot rod your 850 is available. There are lots of suspension upgrades available. Lowering springs, coilovers, polyurethane bushing kits, sway bars, strut tower braces, and various chassis stiffening devices. <laughs> Wow, that Volvo took that super to Gapplebee's racing. The most famous racing Volvo 850 must be the British Touring Car version. Yeah, it's a Volvo wagon. The 850R has been successfully campaigned in the Target Has Media. popular autocrossers. The Volvo 850T5R and the 850R were never intended to be race cars, though. They were intended to be executive cars that whisk driver and passenger from one point to another in the utmost comfort and luxury. Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Run. Buying an 850R or a T5R, there are a few things you need to look out for with these cars. The Positive Crankcase Ventilation System, PCV, is a known weak spot. If a PCV blockage occurs with an 850, it causes an increased crankcase pressure. A quick check for this is to remove the dipstick while the car is running, and if you see a puff of smoke, then the system will need to be replaced. The rear main seal can fail if the PCV system is not replaced. Check between the engine and transmission for oil seepage. The heater cores are prone to failure, so check for an antifreeze smell in the car. Another telltale sign is a steamed up windshield and a wet carpet behind the center console. The tin worm may have to sit this one out. Volvo 850s are not known for having rust issues. These cars are getting old though. Known rust areas. Around the windows and windshield, inner fender rust can form if the washer bottle leaks. Wheel lips and inside the wheel wells. Door sills and around the bottom of the doors. Around the trunk lid and in the trunk, Check under the trunk carpets. Rear bumper mounts tend to rust. Confirm the bumper sits level. Rear exhaust hangers commonly rust, although it is an easy to fix issue. Although the 850T5R and the 850R are somewhat rare, they appear to be quite affordable. JD Power claims a 1996 Volvo 850R wagon's low retail to be $3,075. Average retail to be $3,975. And a high retail to be $5,800. An extensive Google search proved these numbers to be pretty accurate, with only super low mileage, super mint, and ultra rare 5 speed manual cars eclipsing these numbers. The time to buy is now, as these cars are only going to go up in value in the years to come. Thank you for watching this episode of Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I hope you enjoyed my story of the Volvo 850R. Please remember to watch, like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to see you next time.